Well, as usual, before we partake of the table, I like to uh, prepare my heart, and I hope that you have the same desire to th do that for yourself as well, too. As we mentioned earlier in announcements, and I want to just reiterate that this morning, uh, you are welcome to partake with us as born-again baptized believers. Even if you're not a member of this congregation and you're a guest among us, uh, we invite you and encourage you to do that as well, too. Uh, that's what we call a Southern Baptist Open Communion. You don't have to be a believer in a church um, that you're partaking the Lord's Supper of. But we want to do that in a worthy and respectful manner as well, too. And so uh, thank you for families that are participating in that and uh, directing your children not to partake if they're not born-again baptized believers. That's just appropriate. And uh, we don't say that in a disrespectful way, but in a respectful way to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so thank you for observing that as well, too. Would you turn to Matthew, the 26th chapter, and I'm going to begin in verse 17 and kind of do a little bit of what I call a dialogue with the Scripture a little bit. We'll read a little bit. We'll pause a little bit, talk about that, clarify some things, uh, deepen our understanding of those passages. And uh, my goal is to prepare our hearts and our minds for the observance of the table today. Matthew 26, verse 17. On the first day of the festival of an unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparation for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. I want to set the stage for this a little bit. I, I really believe that this probably took place in the lower part of Jerusalem in what we call the Essene community. And it was not uncommon for uh, someone to open up their house and it became kind of a motel hotel, if you will, for people outside Jerusalem that were coming to visit. And so Jesus obviously had made prior preparation. Uh, in one of the other gospels, it says you'll find a man carrying a water pot and a water jar and follow him and so on and so forth. And so this is Matthew's perception of all of that that took place at that particular point in time. And so there in the Essene community in the southern part of Jerusalem, he's they are directed to what we have now called the upper room. Um, when I was there in 86 and when we went back another time with Geneva to visit the Holy Land, they took us to what they called an upper room. It was not the upper room. There's no way to really discover that. But it was a beautiful setting as I gathered in that. It was probably about half the size of this auditorium. And it had open windows, uh, no glass in the windows. And so you can just gather and understand in your mind the setting of all of this. And so the disciples were instructed by the Lord Jesus Christ to go find this gentleman and prepare the Passover meal. Now the Passover meal is the Old Testament concept when the people of Israel were led out of Egypt. You remember that in the Old Testament. And so the Jews would celebrate that time and remember that time on a yearly basis. And every time they did that, they would sacrifice their sacrificial gift, their animal, whatever it might have been, a turtle dove, um, a pigeon, uh, a cow, a lamb, a firstborn, male firstborn. And so uh, that's what they were doing in preparing the Passover meal. Okay, then in verse 20. <clears throat> when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with his twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sad and began to say to one another, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. And Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as, the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. And then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. And Jesus answered, You have said so. You have said so. 
Another translation says, it is you. It is you. I want to reflect upon that just for a moment. It says they were reclining at the table. I love the portrayal that uh, Mel Gibson made of Jesus. Remember that? He was making a table for a Gentile, if you will, like the tables that we gather around. But this was a different setting. And one of those visits to Israel, I had an opportunity to see what they call the triclinium table. And it was right down on the floor, about that far off of the floor. And it was three tables, if you will, in a U-shape. And so with that understanding, it makes sense. He was reclining because they were laying on the floor, eating their meal, and so leaning on their arms and looking at each other and leaning back on each other, not like the, that beautiful picture portrays that we look at today. It wasn't anything like that. It wasn't anything like that. And so that was revolutionary for me to understand a little bit more about what the Scripture is really saying at that point. And so Jesus says to his disciples, one of you is going to betray me. And they all began to look at each other and the Lord was looking at them and, well, surely not me, Lord, surely not me, as he went around the table. Now, I personally believe that there were more than just the 12 there at that particular time. I think there was a, a huge following of disciples that were there with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how I read the scripture anyway. And so Jesus was addressing himself to those that were around that triclinium table, if you will. And so he finally comes to that point of recognizing that truly it was Judas. And the Lord Jesus knew that. He knew who was going to betray him. And so he, he identifies that. But even at that point, the disciples didn't realize that he was actually talking about Judas betraying the Lord Jesus there in Gethsemane. They thought he was talking about money matters or something else of that nature. And so the scripture says, as we follow on there in verse 26, <clears throat> while they were eating, that is a Passover meal, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. And then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So it's just like we do here in just a few moments. Even though this is not the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus, it's representative of his body and of his blood that we'll be partaking of just in a few moments. The unleavened bread, the fruit of the vine. And so Jesus is explaining to his disciples now, I want to give the Passover meal a brand new meaning. He calls it the new covenant. The new covenant. Because no longer is it necessary to kill animals and sacrifice those animals. But now Jesus has sacrificed himself once and for all on the cross. And those of us that have chosen to recognize our own sinfulness and rejection of him, as the scripture says, and accepted him as a savior and the Lord of our life, then we have become a part of God's family, a part of God's family. I personally believe that the Bible teaches that that is a universal thing for anybody that chooses to believe. I don't believe that God has preordained that some of you are gonna be saved and others will go to hell. I don't believe the Bible teaches that. And so everyone that's here, as well as those that are listening online, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as the Savior and the Lord of your life, Jesus died for you on the cross. And you have the opportunity, just like I did as a young boy. Jason was nice enough to mention my mother's service. It's coming up Tuesday of this next week in First Baptist Church of Centralia. The brothers, my two brothers, asked me to perform the ceremony. And I will be alluding to that time that I came to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. It was during a time such as this on the Lord's Supper Sunday. And when the elements came by, I was sitting right by my mom. And I said, Mama, can I partake of this? And she said, well, no, Rodney, not until you become a believer. And so the unleavened bread passed by. Well, I wasn't real sharp at that time. I said, when the fruit of the vine came by, the grape juice that was in the cup, Mama, can I do this? No, Rodney, not until you become a believer. 
It was all by God's design. See, that's how he began to speak to my heart and say, well, I need to consider this very seriously because I'm hearing what the preacher says. This is representative of his body. This is representative of his blood. And Rodney, he died for you on the cross. And the Holy Spirit began to work on my life. And so Mama said at the conclusion of all of that, if you're really serious about this, Rodney, let's talk about this when we get home. And we did. And she said, well, I don't really feel comfortable in leading you to the Lord. I want somebody a little more skilled than I to do that. And so we made an appointment with a preacher. And it was on a Saturday. I remember distinctly. We went to his office. I was scared to death. But he began to ask me some questions. And we began to go through the scriptures. Now, I was pretty young, and I don't have that in my head. It's, it's somewhere here, but it's hidden. I can't remember it all. But I'm confident that he went through the scriptures and wanted to make sure that I understood that I was a sinner in need of Jesus. And at that time, I said yes to Jesus. And he said, Rodney, if you're serious about this, the next time that you're in a worship service at the very end, just like we do, just like this morning, then step out in the aisle and walk down to the front and let me know that. And you know that testimony. I've shared that with you before. And I'm not going to take time to do all of that this morning. But I made that decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you notice there in verse 28, Jesus says, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. That's why he died on the cross, my friend. So that I might come to know him, that you might come to know him, or anybody else that chooses to accept the work that he did for us on the cross. And that's what we're observing this morning as we think about that. For the forgiveness of sins. Aren't you thankful for that? That he cared so much for you. He loved you so much. Before you were even born, or was the twinkle of your mom and dad's eyes, he died on the cross for you. And I hope and pray that if you've never accepted him, that even today would be the day of salvation for you. That you would come to know Jesus Christ as a Savior and the Lord of your life. That's what we're observing, and that's what we're celebrating here in just a few moments. So the scripture goes on and says, they sang a song and they crossed the Kidron Valley from the southern part, I believe, of Jerusalem over to the Mount of Olives. And they went to that place where Jesus prayed with his disciples before, and often he was there in prayer, speaking to the Father. And it's that same time that the Lord Jesus Christ, you remember, is here in the Scripture, and I'm not going to take time to read it this morning, but right here in Matthew 26, Jesus gathers with his disciples there on the Mount of Olives there in Gethsemane, and he asks Peter, James, and John to come with him a little further away from the crowd, and that's when he wrestles with the flesh and basically says those three times, Father, not my will, but there's no way that this can be done outside of my death on the cross. Let it be so. Let it be so. What a time of anguish. What a time of suffering. As he was wrestling with himself and wrestling with Satan and turning his life over to God the Father and saying, I'm willing to die, Father, if that's your plan which it was. And so we know as we follow through the scriptures that they arrested him, took him back across the Kidron Valley, took him to Enos' house where he was questioned by a former high priest and then he was questioned by Caiaphas. And that's where I want to pick it up this morning as we think about that. During that time, Jesus revealed to Peter that he would deny him those three times. So we'll look with me here once again in the Scriptures, Matthew 26, verse 31. And Jesus said to them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. And Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. And truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night 
Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. When Jesus was arrested and Judas kissed him on the cheek to identify him as the Son of God, the rabbi, that the temple guards were coming to arrest, all of the disciples slipped into the darkness and left him alone as he crossed the Kidron Valley. Now, best we can understand in the darkness, John, I believe, the beloved disciple, and Peter followed the Lord Jesus Christ as they took him ultimately to Caiaphas' house. You see that in verse 57. But I want us to look at verse 69. Remember, Jesus had said, Peter, you're going to deny me those three times. And here's when it happened. Verse 69 of Matthew 26. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. And then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. And after a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. And then he began to call down a curse upon himself and he swore to them, I don't know this man. Jesus' words were fulfilled. Peter, you're going to deny me those three times before the rooster crows this very night, this very day. And it happened. It happened on that occasion. Just as Jesus had predicted. Keep that in mind as you turn over to Luke, the 22nd chapter. This is another account of that same episode that took place as Peter denied the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to pick it up there in verse 61. Peter's just now denied the Lord those three times. In verse 61 of Luke 22. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went out and he wept bitterly. I can't imagine what Peter felt like. Not at that moment. The scripture says the Lord looked straight at Peter those three times that he had denied him. Peter was filled with remorse. Remember he said, even if the other disciples, all of them deny you, Lord, I won't. I'll even be willing to die for you. I never will deny you. We don't realize how weak the flesh is sometimes. And he went out and he wept bitterly. He wept bitterly. My whole purpose in doing this is to prepare our hearts for the table this morning. And here's how I want to conclude it. Have you ever been there where Peter was? Maybe at a business meeting. Maybe in a committee meeting. When you said something out of place, maybe it was this morning when you were getting ready for worship 
before your family came to church. Maybe sometime this last week. Maybe a circumstance of life that you find yourself in. And in your own heart, nobody else knows about it, but you do. You're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we become just like Peter. We're tempted by Satan. We grab a hold of that temptation, which is sin. And we deny the Lord. My dear Christian friends, we are responsible for every one of those times since the time of our salvation that we have not brought it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I have asked the Holy Spirit to reveal to me and to you and those of you that are listening online, in this moment, is there something this last week, is there something since the time that you were saved that the Holy Spirit is revealing to you right now that you need to bring under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ so that when you and I partake of these holy elements that we do not do it in an unworthy manner. As Amy comes to the piano right now to play in this moment, I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is looking straight at me and straight at you just like he did for Peter. And Peter knew that he denied the Lord those three times. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will reveal to every one of our hearts that are believers that if there's any sin of omission or sin of commission, omission is when the Holy Spirit says, do this, Rodney, and I don't. Commission is committed sin. I know God's word, but I still do it. I commit a sin against the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter thought about that in his mind, what the Lord had said, and he remorsed within his heart, and he wept. He wept bitterly. Let's go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Maybe you need to come right now and kneel at this altar. Maybe it's time for you to weep bitterly and confess your sins before the Lord. Paul says, let a man examine his heart and not partake of the table in an unworthy manner. And I believe that Jesus is deeply looking into every one of our hearts this instantaneous moment. And if the Holy Spirit reveals anything to you or to me, I pray that we would have the courage and the remorsefulness to confess that to the Lord Jesus Christ and claim the promise of 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But my dear friend, maybe you're here today and you cannot partake of these elements today because you've never known the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior and the Lord of your life. Today is a day of salvation, my friend, for you, if you would only accept Him. Recognizing your sin of rejection, admitting to yourself that you're a sinner in need of Christ as Savior. And right now, this instantaneous moment, you could ask Jesus into your heart and into your life. If you make that decision today, I would ask you to step right out right now and come down to the front and share that with me. As we wait for us as believers to confess our sins and as we wait on you to make that decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this time of examining our hearts. Thank you for the opportunity to look into your precious word that reminds us of the price that was paid for our salvation and the fact that even as believers, we can deny you on occasion, not our salvation, but just because of our sinfulness, 
as we listen to Satan rather than to you. And I pray that we have confessed those things before you and we are ready to partake of this holy table today. In Jesus' name we pray and amen.